for the Father that you are to us. We're grateful that you gave us your son, Jesus. We're grateful to you, Jesus, for redeeming us and dying, giving your life for our sin. We're grateful to you for giving us the Holy Spirit who lives in us, who teaches us, who comforts us and helps us in life. And we're so ever and forever grateful. We come and we stand in your presence, always giving thanks and praises to your name for your goodness and to the praise and the glory of your grace. We do give thanks and praises to you. We praise you for your redemption. We praise you for teaching us the ways of God, showing us the way in the places and the things that we will have, you will have for us and revealing to us the errors in our lives that the enemy is hiding behind to stop the flow of the anointing of the blessings of God. And we'll give you glory, praise, and honor in Jesus' name. You may have a seat. Hey, St. Peter's, I'm here. Joy and I, we're here to help you to have what God promised you, be what God created you for. And our greatest hindrance to being what God created us to be and have what God promised us is lack of knowledge. God said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That's my responsibility as the under shepherd to Jesus is teach you the word. The Holy Spirit within me, he leads me to teach on certain things. And once he put a subject in my heart, I begin to study and seek his directions on how it will bring out. And then once I share with you what he put in my heart, it's up to you to decide whether you're going to do it. But Jesus said, he that hears my word to do it, it was like unto a wise man. But he that hears the word to do it, it's not as like a foolish man. When I give you a word, it's between you and God after that. You have to believe and respond to what you have heard. And always remember, God responds to us based on how we respond to him. God's not going to run you down and make you obey him. But if you do re obey him, he'll reward you for your obedience. I have a message this morning that I feel that is so important to where this church, of, I'm responsible for this house. I'm an under shepherd to Jesus. And God started me a little while back talking on the anointing. And I thought after last week's family conference, I would get into another subject. But the Lord put another subject in my heart about the anointing. So today I want to talk to you on the anointing and humility. Amen. This is a good lesson that you must learn if God's going to take you there. When you yield to the anointing, it changes every aspect of your life. Let's get into it. Here in 1 John 2, Verses 20 and 27. But you have an unction from the Holy One. Uh, you know all things by the Spirit. That unction is the anointing. And you know all things through that. And you notice there in verse 27. But the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you. And you need not that any natural man teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you all, of all things. And this anointing is truth and not a lie. We know the Holy Spirit. He is the spirit of truth. Even as he has taught you, you shall abide in him, the anointing. So let's look at a few things. I've covered this in times past, but the Bible says the anointing abides in you. See, the key to yours and my success is the anointing of God on our lives. And then he said, you shall abide in this anointing that God has placed in you. How do I abide in it? By yielding a given place to it. We learn in Isaiah 10, 27, the anointing breaks yokes in our lives. The anointing confronts the curse. The anointing reverses the curse. The anointing releases the blessings. And as you yield to it, 
That's what will happen. He'll enter into your life and begin to deal with issues in our lives that the enemy will use to stop the flow of the anointing. And once he has cleaned my life and got my life in line, blessings start flowing, favors start coming. And then we learn in 1 Samuel 10, verses 6, the anointing turns you into another person. It takes you from the unnatural to the spiritual. Because now you're yielding to the spirit of the living God. And you may notice the anointing is God. And it manifests itself through the word and the spirit of God as you abide in him. God has anointed his word and he has anointed his spirit. Because the word and the spirit, they are synonymous Remember Acts 10, 38, why the Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went by doing good and healing all who were sick and oppressed of the devil. The anointing breaks yokes. The anointing brings healing. The anointing does good. And when you yield to the spirit, which is God's anointing, it begins to work in your life, turn you into a spiritual person. It's no longer you that liveth, but it's now Christ living within you. Now, we learned this in times past, so I won't spend a lot of time there. What I want to focus on this morning is interference to the anointed. Interference, what is behind, what's going to stop the flow of the anointing? Because the anointed, which is the Holy Spirit, he leads us, he guides us, he directs us, he teaches us, he blesses us. He confronts those issues or those curses in our lives. He stops the flow of Satan and releases the power of God in our lives. And it turns us into another person. It changes every aspect of our life. So we need to know if there's anything in my life that will stop the flow of the anointing, I want to know what it is. Because God said my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So let's get into this. Notice here in Proverbs 18, verse number 12, this is a good word to you, St. Peter's, because God is raising this house up to be a light here in this city. God is raising you up to be a light to your family and your friends. Now listen to me as I follow the Lord. Notice here, Proverbs 18, 12, before destruction, right there, the heart of man is haughty. Whoa. And before honor is humility. Boy, that's a powerful word there. Let's look at this hearty. Notice that a hearty spirit is someone who is hearty, is arrogant, and full of pride. When you're hearty, you have a big attitude and acts like you're better than anyone else. Next slide. A hearty person acts superior. And looks down on other folks who don't have two suits, two dollars, and two cars. A harder person acts disdainful, overbearing, prideful, swaggering, obnoxious. That word obnoxious means unpleasant. They act unpleasant, disagreeable, repulsive. They're nasty. They can't get along with nobody. It's all about them. But notice what the Bible stated there in Proverbs 16, verse 18. Pride goes before destruction and a heart of spirit before a fall. Pride will lead you into destruction. A heart of spirit is someone who assumes they are superior to everybody else. They're stuck up, conceited, because they got two dollars, two suits, and two cars. That's why you got to watch out for knowledge, because knowledge puffs you up. Because you have a few degrees, you assume you're better than everybody else in the room. Don't never allow what you have learned to cause you to be conceited, that you can't fellowship with someone who don't have none. Don't never allow yourself to think you're superior to others because they haven't learned what you learned. Notice what the scriptures say there in Proverbs 11, 2. When pride cometh, they come with shame. When you get a spirit of pride, you're destined for falling. Because pride comes before destruction. But with the lowly, with the meek, the humble, 
is wisdom. And then notice what God stated about arrogant, pride, hearty. Proverbs 8, 13, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, to hate pride and arrogancy and the evil way. And the frowned mouth, he said, do I hate? This is God talking to us. Didn't he tell us in Proverbs 4, 24, put far from you a frowned mouth and perverse lips. A frowned person is a person who is difficult to deal with. They're contrary, stubborn, stuck in their ways, and they refuse to change. I don't care how many scriptures you tell them, they're contrary, they're stuck in their ways, and they refuse to change. God will speak to them, but they're locked in their ways. They're locked in their tradition. They're locked in what they thought they know, not realizing God knows more than all of us. Now that we learned that, let's look at the person behind that, Satan. When you give place to pride, hardness, conceited, stubborn, proud, superior, that's the work of Satan. A lot of people don't realize that the devil's working in their lives. But that's what the scripture's for, to inform us, to identify the adversary that is working in our lives and we are not aware of it. Let's talk about Satan for a while, the spirit of Antichrist. Notice there in Ezekiel, the 28th chapter, verses 11 through 15. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, next slide, Son of man, take up a lamentation unto the king of Tyre, and say unto him, Thus said the Lord God, Thou sealest up the psalm, now underline this, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. This is talking about Satan. Verse 13, Thou hast been in Edom, the garden of God, Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, the dam, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and the gold. But notice here, to the people who are involved in music, the workmen of their tablets and of their pipes was prepared in the, in the day that was created. His pipes, his tablets, those are musical instruments was put in Satan. All of us have gifts put in us at the day of creation. Everyone here, God put gifts in you on the day of creation. And a lot of you are not even aware of it because you didn't tap into the anointing. But here in Satan's case, God is telling him he had to be beautiful because all of those things that we spoke about, we cherish uh, was his covering. But God said the workmen of the tablets and of their pipes were prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Then in verse 16, note 14, he said, There are the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. He said, Thou was upon the holy mountains of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stone of fire. But I want to say something there before I go to the next scripture. You may notice there in verse number 12, we say, Full of wisdom. Satan was full of of wisdom. God created everything and everything God created, the devil gave a name to it. Everything. But I was talking to my wife about this. He was full of wisdom, but he didn't have enough sense not to challenge God. He opposed God. If he had all of that wisdom going for him, you would assume he knew, but he challenged the authority of God. He opposed the authority of God. So say the man is smart, but the Bible says he was full of wisdom, but he didn't have enough sense to know that you can't oppose God. You can't challenge God, or you can't oppose or challenge God's authority. Because the Bible says in Romans 13, verse 1, the authority that's be there are ordained of God. Watch how you respond to God's chosen authority. God delegates people to speak into your life. And don't be so quick to oppose them or touch God's anointed or speak against him. Amen. Amen. I know of a situation where this young man and his mom had a misunderstanding with one another. And I told the young man, that's your mom. I always respect her. Right or wrong, always respect her. And he received it. And he'll be blessed. Don't never allow yourself to stand up against your parents. 
Don't, I don't care right or wrong. Always remember, respect those in authority. Don't ever allow the spirit to come up on the inside of you that you will attack God's chosen authority in your life. Never, never, never. Don't never do that. Always the Bible touch. The Bible says, touch not my anointed. Your parents, they are God's anointed. Your leaders, they are God's anointed. Be careful how you deal with God's anointed. Whether they are right or wrong, God didn't send you to put them in place. God sent you to pray for those in authority. He said, pray for those in authority. So if you have a pern out of the will of God, start praying for them. But God didn't send you to correct them. And that is even true to those in authority. You pray for those that are in authority. Be careful how you use your mouth against those in authority. Be careful. Don't entertain thoughts that would disallow or dishonor those that God has placed in your life. I think that's one of the things that my parents taught us early in life. Always respect the elders. And I've always practiced that. Never, I don't ever recall, ever allow myself to uh, entertain a thought that would dishonor my parents. Never fussed at my mama. Never fussed at my daddy. My brother Charles or uh, Bishop Reuben. None of us, I don't ever, any of our family coming against our parents or standing up and attacking our parents. Don't do that. That's dangerous. Always honor your parents. Whether they're right or wrong, always respect your parents and don't ever allow yourself to be elevated above them. Now, if you listen to me, God will bless you. But if you get an arrogant, heady, high-minded spirit, you withhold the blessings of God from coming to your life. Because the anointing will not flow for the disrespect or disobedience to God's commands. I remember my dad hit me in the head with a shoe one time. I was, oh, that bothered me. But I never allowed myself to disrespect my dad. He didn't know no better. He was upset. I was young then, but I didn't disrespect him. And I was, one time, I came here. I remember this. After I had finished Bible college in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I was with, I came here, God sent me here to help my dad. They were having a conference in, Winston, in uh, Bluefield, no, in, in Greensboro, North Carolina. And the Lord gave me a word for the Church of God Apostolic at that time. I stood up and gave that word. And my dad walked over to me and took the mic out of my hand and set me down. And all the eyes was on me. I did not, I did not, God is my witness. I did not take an offense. Because my dad corrected me based upon what he had learned. Now, later on, my dad realized that I had a word and I was right. But that was not for me to correct my dad. Now, the sad thing about it, I was his driver. I had to drive him back home that night. So I drove him. I picked up his briefcase. I drove, and I drove him back home. Never mention it. And I would never. And God, I believe personally, I was on trial to see if I was ready to step in to this position as a pastor because God would suffer you to go through certain things just to see if you are ready to step into the calling of God. God will have people to rub you wrong. God will have people to check you out. And if you haven't learned the value, you can bypass some of your promotion because you did not allow the spirit of humility to overtake you. Don't touch God's anointing. My mom correct me openly. And they did it based upon what they had learned. Later on, they learned that I was by, given the word by God. They're doing it today, but at that time, they didn't know it. And I would not allow myself to get in the flesh and take an offense against my parent. That's my mama. That's my daddy. They may not have the degrees and the knowledge and the natural, but they got God. They got God. They know God. They have a relationship with God. And I will never allow myself to be elevated above them in the spirit realm. I may have learned some things natural, but they learned in the spirit. And here I am, a little young whippersnapper. And here I am going to arrive. Let my flesh rise up above my parents. Don't let that happen, St. Peter. Oh, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. And I want to help you guys. Respect your parents. Respect your elders. 
We got elders here in this church. Respect them. They may not have 10 degrees, but they know God. Now let's get into verse 15. Notice what he said. He said, thou was perfect in their way from the day that, I, that thou was created. Notice what happened. Till iniquity was found in thee. So you were perfect in your way until you allow iniquity to enter into your heart. Let's look at this. I'll pull a few things out. Next slide. He said, there are the anointed cherub. Do you not know he was a special angel in the holy of holies? He was an archangel. He was the one that led worship. He ministered to Jesus. He had a lot going for him. But then notice, he said, thou was perfect in their ways. He was perfect in beauty. He was in Edom, the garden of God. Every precious stone was his covering. His pipes, his gifts, his abilities was prepared in him when he was created. All of these things was working in him when he was created. That's a word to, the, to, to those of you in the music ministry. God will elevate your anointing if you don't let pride get in. God will take your anointing on the level. If you don't. And not only do the music people, but Satan was his responsibility to do, was to lead worship. Watch out. Don't let pride get in. Arrogance. God hates those things. The evil way. Watch out. Satan got to hide, find something to hide behind to stop the flow of the anointing. All of these things was working in his life till iniquity was found in him. Pride got in his heart. And the Bible said, before destruction comes, pride. If Satan can get a spirit of pride in you, you're destined for a fall. Amen. It stops the flow of the anointed. Notice the next slide there. His pride inter interfered with his anointing. He lost his position in heaven to God's holy of holies. Because of pride. Regardless of how far God takes you, don't let pride slip in. You may have 10 degrees, but you can still pick up a piece of paper. You still can work in the children's ministry. You still can work in the parking lot. You still can do those little tests. There's no test too small in the house of God that I wouldn't do. Now what you got to learn is this right. See, God had three archangels. Micah, the warrior. Gabriel, the messenger. And Lucifer, which is the devil, the worshiper. That was Satan's assignment. Three archangels and all the others was up under those three. Now let's look at this again in Isaiah's teaching, in Isaiah the 14th chapter, verses number 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cast down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? Notice there in verse 13, for thou hast said in thy heart, now get this right here, this is the devil, thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend unto heaven, I will Exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will set up on the mountain of the congregation in the sides of the north. Verse 14, I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high God. Now, look at this. Next slide. How are they fallen? The course was a from heaven. I can tell you why he failed. He was selfish. Satan became selfish. A spirit of selfishness came within him. He entertained those thoughts. And see, when you start entertaining thoughts, a thought will take over your life. Five different times in those two verses, he spoke about, I will, what I will do. I will ascend unto the heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit up on the mouth of the congregation of the elders of the sides of the Lord. I will ascend above the heights of the cliff. I will be like the most high God. See, it was all about him. 
that got him in trouble. He was beautiful above all creatures. He was anointed above all creatures. He was gifted above all creatures. His gifts were put in him in the days of creation. He was covered with the stones and the different things he spoke about. He had everything going for him. Everything going for him. And he still wasn't satisfied. But you know what happened? Pride got in his heart. I want to say something to all of you. Hear me, St. Peter, as your spiritual father, as the under shepherd of Jesus. As God elevate us here at St. Peter's, let's stay humble. Because God is here in this house and he is elevating this house. But that don't make us no better than the churches down the street. We will never allow ourselves to be so elevated into what God has done to make us think that we're better than the church down the street that's have five people. God would not elevate us. God would not promote us to look down on somebody else. And if I can say this to you, St. Peter, hear me as your spiritual leader. You've got to learn this right here. As God elevate you, your family, your business, pride, arrogancy, the evil way, the flower man, perverse lip has to go. If God's going to take you there, those things that God hates, you better take them out of your life. If God's going to promote you like he wants to, you follow me as I follow the Lord. I just gave you something that God gave me. You're destined for greatness. Because the Bible says, eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, neither has it entered the heart of man. The things that God has prepared for them that love him, but he revealed those things unto us by his spirit. It was God that said, pride goes before destruction and the heart of spirit before the fall. Regardless of how far God take us, and he's going to take us far places, far more than you can imagine if we stay in faith and believe him eyes haven't seen ears haven't heard you have no desire you have no idea where God's going to take you out there you Linda all of you St. Peter's Miss Cook you have no if you just follow me as our father the Lord you're destined for greatness but the key word Miss Bishop and everybody else Robin don't let pride if God give you two suits stay humble if God give you four suits Stay humble. If God give you five suits, stay humble. If he give you two cars, two dollars, stay humble. Stay humble. See, sir, you got to stay humble to where God's going to take you. If God's going to take you there, you got to stay humble. You have no idea where God is setting us up here at St. Peter's. You have no idea. You can't see from where you are. But God knows where he wants to take you and he'll give you a word like this to keep your heart right so that he can take you there. See, an arrogant man won't listen. He is stubborn. He is contrary. He'll live in his way and he'll miss the anointed. See, the anointing will qualify you. Naturally, you can't do what God has assigned you to do. Naturally, you can't go. You can't take your business. You can't take your house. I can't take this church to where God wants to take us without the anointing. Don't let success interfere with where God's going to take you. Thank God for $2. Thank God for two houses. Thank God for whatever you have achieved. But you know it was the Lord's doing. Whatever I am, I'm like the Apostle Paul. Paul said this in 1 Corinthians 15, 10. He said, I am what I am because of the grace of God. You can't sit beside somebody that's got one suit. They may not have a suit, so give them one of your suits. They may not have a car, though. Give them one of your cars. Don't let yourself become so arrogant that you can't listen to your leader. I am your pastor. God has assigned me to give you a word. And the Bible says, the meek shall inherit the kingdom of God. I know God is elevating this church. I know God. God is not paying this mortgage off just for us to sit down here and glory in what we have done. No, he's paying this mortgage off so we can help somebody else and we can fill up the 79 acres of property. God will reward you for your rehearsal. God will reward you for your obedience. And the last thing you want to do is get to the point where you think you know more than your leader. Naturally, you might. Spiritually, you don't. 
because God don't choose us based upon our natural ability. God chooses us based upon our response to his word. The Bible says the meek shall inherit the earth. The humble shall inherit the kingdom. God will give you the ability if you just show up. And I want y'all to hear God has positioned us. I don't know what else is going to take place here, but I know it's going to be good because everything God does, it is good. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul shout hallelujah. I praise God for saving me. Yesterday we had uh, the opening of the Blue Green Academy. Stand up, Miss Cook. She's the chairman of the board there, Michelle Cook. We were there. But see, God blessed us to be a blessing to them. Stand up, Jason. Stand up, Jane. We're on the board there. Tim, stand up. You're on the board there. See, these are board members over there. Who else? Oh, Sam, stand up. See, these are board members over there. But see, God blessed us to be a blessing to them. They couldn't do what they're doing had not God blessed us. But see, God blessed us to be a blessing to them. See, if we continue to reach out to be a blessing to others, God will continue to bless us. But if we get arrogant, hated, high-minded, think we have arrived. I haven't arrived. You haven't arrived. We have on the ride, but good God Almighty, look how far God has brought us. Look what the Lord has done. There's no way we could take a $15 million loan in 12 years and take it from here down to where we go. It was the doing of the Lord. Say, it was the Lord's doing. Come on, St. Peter. We have to give God the glory. We have to give God the praise. We have to give God the honor. It was the Lord's doing. God taught me. I came down here and taught you. Now look what the Lord has done. But can you imagine what's awaiting us down the road if we stay humble before God? Because the secret to your success is staying humble before God. Don't never allow yourself to become arrogant, hated, high-minded, full of pride, following the evil way, a perverse lip, a frower mouth. God said, I hate those things. And I don't want to be a part of anything that God hates. But if you trust me as your leader and follow me as our Father, the Lord, you'll be a light to the city. You'll be a light to your family. You'll be a light to your enemy. Because God said, I'll prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemy. And your enemy will hate you, but you'll walk in the light. The enemy will see what the Lord has done. The enemy tries to stop God, but nobody can stop God. Nobody can stop you if God is for you. God said, I take down and I put up. Don't let yourself, because you got $2, two suits, and two cars, become arrogant here, mine. I don't need to go to church. I don't need pastor. I don't need the word. You're the one that need to hear it. The devil will set you up to make you think you don't need to be in church. You don't need to come in here. Everybody need to hear a word like this. Because I've seen people leave out of here, and they got a $2, two suits, and two cars, and they got too big for St. Peter's. Well, let me get off this subject. Satan's biggest problem, pride got in his heart. And watch out for pride. Watch out for arrogance. Watch out for the evil way. Proud mouth, perverse lips. Now, next slide. He was anointed above all the other angels, but he was not satisfied. Because selfish people, they are never satisfied. They got everything going for them, but they're still not satisfied. That's what the spirit of lust would do. You're never satisfied. He wanted to be exalted above God, the, his leader, his creator. That's a danger when you entertain thoughts that you want to be exalted above your leader because you start saying and doing things that disqualify your leader. And that's what happened. He started entertaining thoughts. The Bible said you had all of this going for you till iniquity was found in your heart. You were gifted. You had pipes in you. You had tablets in you. You had everything that make you stand out above the fellow. But yet, the one thing that interfered with the anointing was you allow iniquity. Amen. 
pride goes before destruction and a harder spirit before fall. Before fall comes pride. Erickson, hard headedness, high minded. You don't like to listen. You got your own mind. You do it your own way. Here he was an archangel, one of the leading angels. Had the ability to run up and down the throne of God in the heavens. Had access to the Holy of Holies. But the problem, he got selfish and pride got in his way. He no longer wanted to listen. He lost his anointing, his position because of pride. Let's look at something here. Notice here in Revelation, the 12th chapter, verses 7. And there was a war in the heavens. And Michael and his angel fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought against his angels. Verse 8, and they prevailed not, say them in this crowd, they prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, an old serpent called the devil, and say them, notice, which deceives the whole world. And he cast out, he was cast into the earth, and his angels, which are demons of day, was cast out with him. They had three archangels. All the angels were under him. See, a third of the angels was under Michael, the warrior. A third of the angels was under Gabriel, the messenger. And a third of the angels was under Satan, the worshiper. But see, Satan's angels were turned into demons when they came against God. See, there are two angels to every demon in the world. But watch this right here, guys. You can learn some great things here. Let's look at this. Next slide. Satan was cast out of heaven. God's holy of holy because of pride. Iniquity was found in his heart. Watch out. Don't entertain anything that's going to bring pride. His place in heaven is void as the worshiper. Now the Bible says in, first, in John 4, 23, 24, the hour has come and that the true worshiper, the hour has come and now is that the true worshiper shall worship the Father in the spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. So here is God. See, Satan was cast out of the heaven. So there's no longer a worshiper in heaven worshiping God. So now that's the assigned responsibility. Every born again believer is to worship God. Worship God. God is a spirit. And they that worship him shall worship him here in spirit and in truth. When I'm giving place to the word, that's reverence to God. I'm worshiping God. Find time to worship him. Find time. Because the Bible says, see them is no longer there worshiping God. So now here in the earth, God is in you. But you must find time to worship him. The Father seeks those that will worship him in spirit and in truth. Worship is the key to greatness. Worship is the key to the heart of God. When I give place to the word, that's a form of worship. I find time to get along to myself and I just worship and I adore him. God longs for that. See, God longs to have the kind of relationship with you that you will reverence him. You will worship him. You will honor him with your voice. He wants to hear from your mouth how you love him, how you worship him, how you honor him. No one can worship him for me, but you can worship with me. I repeat, no one can worship God for me but you can worship with me when we come to the house of God find time to worship him in your private time at home find time to worship him because the Bible says the father is seeking those who will worship him in spirit and in truth now if you learn that right there you will find time and make time to worship God are you out there now let's move on notice right there in second uh, that next bullet no go back I want to get there Satan is deceiving the whole world now, he lost his position in heaven as the worshiper. Now, he is deceiving the whole world. Everyone who is not saved is living under deception. The Bible says he was cast into the world. And now, he's deceiving people. And there were even some Christians, the Bible says, Christians who refuse to obey the word is living under reception. I mean, deception. Now, we know the world is living under deception because they don't know Christ. But you can get saved and reject the word and you're being deceived to think that God's going to reward you for your stubbornness or your rejection or your pride or your arrogance or uh, evil way. He will not. Now, God will forgive sin, but he won't reward it. 
So let's look at this. Revelation 12, verse 10. Notice, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. Notice, for he is the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accused him before our God day and night. Now I want to say something here. Don't give your voice to devil to start accusing people. Watch out how you speak against people. Listen to me. Watch out how you speak against people because the Bible says the devil, he is the accuser of the brethren, but he got to find a voice that will give in to his accusation. Don't be so quick to accuse people. Now, next verse. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. Next verse. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he has but a short time. Verse 13. And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, notice what happened. He persecuted the woman was brought forth the man child. And let's look at this right now. Next verse. Satan persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child, Jesus. Now you see, women face a lot of persecution in the world today. And you can see why women go through such persecution. Because it was the woman who God used to bring forth the Savior, Jesus himself, into the world. But also it is the woman that God will use to establish his family. God wants a family. And every woman, he said, refill, re replenish the earth with sons and daughters of God. God has a place for women, not only to give birth to children, but God has trusted women to raise his prophets, his priests, his kings, his sons and his daughters. The women has always played a major role in God's creation. But Satan hates the woman because she was the one that brought the man child Jesus into the earth. But also the woman is the one that God will use to bring more sons and daughters into the earth. Now I'm going to say something right here. You might get mad at me for saying it, but I got to say it because God put it in my heart. Same sex marriages can produce sons and daughters of God. Come on now, come on. That's the devil. See, the same sex marriage is Satan's way of stopping creation. Because men to men, women to women cannot produce. And God has always wanted a family. He said, replenish the earth. So the world is giving place to a spirit that is violating God's commands. Now I'll just leave it right there. But I know it's not of God. I repeat, I know it's this same-sex marriage is not of God. It's a pit of hell and it's Satan's way of stopping God's creation. Now, I'm, against, I'm not against homosexuality. Yeah, I'm against homosexuality. I'm not against the homosexual. I'm, I'm not against the lesbian. I'm against lesbianism because I know that lifestyle cannot produce. Men marrying men cannot produce. Women marrying women cannot produce. And God said, replenish the earth. And I'm going to leave it right there to let you take it from there. I'm not going to take it no further. And it's my job as your leader to tell you the truth. I'm not putting down the gay movement. All I'm saying is it's not of God. I love the people. And this is what I want you to learn. They're going to come here. They're going to come here, and you got to walk in love to them. Don't you ever allow yourself to get arrogant, headed, high-minded. I can't sit beside him because he's gay. I can't sit beside her because he's lesbian. Bishop Reed came here and taught something. Let them come in. They can join the church. Let them hear the truth. Because how can they change if you don't put them in an environment to hear the truth? So as they come, whether they're straight or gay or whatever, they're, we got to walk in love to all of God's creation. We got to love the homosexual. We got to love the gay. We got to love the lesbian. And let them come. They can join the church. And let them sit you and hear God's word. And I die 
dare you to turn your nose up to them. I dare you to turn your nose up to them. You walk in love to them. Because one of them might be your son or your daughter or your grandchild. You walk in love to them like it's your own. And see, we're going to be different from everybody else. We're going to let God arise on their level. We're going to love everybody regardless of their state or their condition or their situation in Jesus' name. So if they come down here and they walk down here and I receive them in the church, don't you get all arrogant, hate your high mind and get mad at me. I know what I'm doing. God didn't tell us to not stop loving them. God loved you in your mess. We let you come down here in your mess. God loves you and you're doing, so we're going to let them come in here and hear the truth and walk in love, and we're going to be different from all the others. So there we are. If they sat beside you, walk in love. We will never allow ourselves to be full of pride. I can't associate with him or her. Let me get off of that. But notice the scripture, they overcame the devil how? By the blood of the lamb and by the words of their testimonies. And they loved not their lives unto death. Jesus provided the blood and we have to provide the testimony. See, we give the testimony today in our lives of what the Lord has done. God made it possible. I haven't been a saint all my life. So how can I look down on someone else who haven't got to where I am? No one has arrived. Are you there? Love will cover a multitude of sin. Amen. Now let's get into this, bring closer to this right here. Notice in this chapter, the scripture, Proverbs 22, 4, by humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Right here is the key. By humility and the fear of the Lord. Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 12, 13, the duty of every man is to fear God and to keep his commandments. Here the Bible says, through humility and the fear of the Lord comes what? Riches, honor, and life. James 4, verse 6 and 7, but he gives us more grace. Wherefore God, he said, God resists the proud, but he gives us grace unto the humble. And then he says in verse 7, Submit yourself to God, therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Next verse. Humble yourself before the mighty hand of God, and what will happen? He'll exalt you, he'll lift you up in due time. So next slide. Tell your neighbor, God give his grace to the humble. God's favor comes to the humble. By humility and the fear of the Lord comes what? Riches honor, and life. So the Bible says you always submit yourself to God and you resist the devil. You resist that spirit of pride, that spirit of advocacy, that spirit of haughtiness, that spirit of the evil way. The Bible says you are to resist that pride, that spirit. And when you give place, humble yourself. God said he will exalt you in due time. And then in Peter's writing, and see what you got to learn, guys, this is a command. This is not a suggestion. God commands us to submit to God. He commands us to humble ourselves. And in Peter's writing, notice what it says, Likewise, you younger, submit yourself unto the other. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. Why? For God resists the proud, but he gives his grace to the humble. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. Wow, that he may exalt you in due time. Three things, and I will close out there. He said we ought to be clothed with humility. Wow, because through humility, the fear of the Lord, riches, honor, and life comes. God resists the prayer. Pride goes before the structure and the heart of spirit full fall. By humility, what will happen? You will be exalted to with what? Riches, honor, and life. That's all I have for you today in the name of the Lord Jesus. Listen to me. Listen to me. Where God wants to take you, you better learn this. Regardless of how far God take you, be clothed in humility. How far God wants to take you will determine how you respond. Don't never allow yourself to become arrogant, hated, high-minded. You won't listen. 
Or you think you're better than somebody else. And you got to have all of the big jobs and no time for the little jobs. There is no job so little that I won't do in this house. And I've learned if there's no one else show up to do it, I would do it. Let's pray. Father, we just have shared with the people what you have put in my heart. To those of you that are online, this is a special message to all of us. And I pray that you will hear as we have heard and deal with those issues in our lives that the enemy has allowed to come into our lives that will stop the flow of the anointing. We're here for you. You can call us at any time and we're here to pray with you. But if you're here in this service this morning, and you say, Bishop, I need prayer. It's between you and God. I would ask you to get up, walk right down here, and we'll pray with you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Because all of us need to recognize.